out with the old and in with the Elegoo. This is their newest FDM 3D printer, the Centauri Carbon. And the Centauri part of their name is borrowed from Alpha Centauri. And the Carbon part is entirely original. They could have just as easily called this the Stardust 3D printer, but I don't think that has the same ring to it. So let's open this thing up, get it set up, and 3D print some stuff. Full disclosure, they did send me this unit for free to review, and there is an affiliate link in the description, so take whatever I say with a grain of salt. As far as setting this thing up, it's very easy to unbox, comes out in one piece. Once your printer's in position, you remove a couple extra pieces of foam, cut this zip tie and remove the cardboard that's holding the hot end secured to the side of the frame, and remove the foam from the poop chute. Now we can open up the spare parts kit, find the 2mm allen key, and unlock the heated bed from these three screws. Once those screws are free, we can install the touchscreen LCD panel. I would like to see this ribbon cable be a little bit longer. It was actually a little tricky to get this connected when you have your hands in the way and the way the mount is on the back of the LCD screen, so there's some room for improvement there. But once you get that ribbon cable connected, you just slot it into the tab and it secures nicely to the 3D printer. Hook it up to power, turn it on, and we can see the Elegoo logo appear on the screen. And then it's going to want to go through a startup procedure. It says that it takes 30 minutes, but I timed it and it took 25. While you're waiting, you can install the filament spool holder on the side of the machine. And it gives you some time to download and install their Elegoo flavor of the Orca Slicer. If you're familiar with Prusa Slicer, Orca Slicer, or Bamboo Studio, you'll be very familiar with this platform and you'll be able to hit the ground running very quickly uh, slicing in this Elegoo flavor of Orca Slicer. One of the issues that I did run into with the Elegoo Slicer when I first received the unit was sending files from the slicer to the printer over my LAN network. This appears to have been an issue with an initial release and they have since sent out a updated version and this is no longer an issue. This is the sound of the printer performing its self-tests or its self-checks. You can hear that one of those fans is quite noisy. I'm not sure if this is a defect with my specific unit or if this is the noise that will be produced from every unit while one of the chamber fans is running. The self-check is complete and now we can load up some filament and here's where we run into another issue. The bend radius on the PTFE tube into the extruder assembly is just too sharp when it comes out of the drag chain. You can see it getting stuck here as I try and move it past that point continuously and then you can see it get stuck in this next location on another bend. Definitely something that they need to sort out. I had to manually smoothen out this corner in order to get the filament to run through correctly. Another issue I'm seeing with this drag chain is the rubbing against the PTFE tube, which is causing some premature wear. You can see shavings of the tubing coming off of it here. This is definitely going to be a failure point for these printers. And with that out of the way, we can finally start printing. These are all the files that came pre-sliced on the included USB stick. There's this vase, followed by a classic Benchy, a little Buddha, the Eiffel Tower, which struggled a little bit on some of the overhangs on the bottom here, and then the tip also got a little bit iffy at the end, but that's a struggle for most FDM 3D printers at this scale. Followed by a Elegoo branded scraper for the build plate. And finally, we have a mini Centauri Carbon model that also doubles as a catch can for the poop chute, which I think is a great idea. I think all manufacturers should include some sort of file for catching the poop that comes out of the back of their printers. The printer comes included with a double-sided PEI print bed. Side A is a textured PEI and side B is a smooth PEI. You can see the difference on these two parts. The textured side A is on the left and the smooth side B is on the right. I personally prefer the textured look, but to each their own and they both have their use case. PEI is nice because once the print cools down, the parts just slide right off. Now I have a bone to pick with Elegoo and some other manufacturers that do the same thing. 
If you're going to advertise your 3D printer as being 256 by 256 by 256 millimeters in volume, I should be able to use that entire build volume. I should be able to print a cube that is 256 by 256 by 256 millimeters and it should fit within that print volume. These printers are coming with these filament cutters in order to do the filament changes and that is creating a dead zone on these plates that you cannot print within. I think that this can be misleading and consumers that are intending to use the entire build volume should keep this in mind when they're shopping for a 3D printer. On another note, you can see that the filament runout sensor does work based on the orange running out and the black being the continuation. That feature works just fine. Now for some other parts that I printed using the default Elegoo profile in some PLA. Here's a torture toaster, which turned out pretty nice. The toast works, the gears work, the flaps work all the way up till the 0.1 test. And that's where it fails. The overhangs look nice until you get into some of the more drastic overhangs. And then we've got a Benchy, followed by a Bodhi, followed by a Lil Yachty. This Flexi Cat, that's a fun deviation from all the Flexi Dragons out there. And this vase that I printed in vase mode in order to gather all of my supports and the poops that come out of the poop chute. If you haven't printed in vase mode, I highly recommend it. They come out looking super smooth. It's really cool. Now for some support removal. Overall, it did a very good job with the supports and with the model. This helmet also looks pretty good if you ask me. Now let's rattle off some hardware specs for this thing. We have a 256 by 256 by 256 print volume. We have a steel chassis, an aluminum and glass shell, an all metal hot end, a hardened steel extruder gear, a hardened steel nozzle, 320 degrees Celsius max hot end temperature, 0.4 millimeter nozzle, 60 watt heater, which is a double smiley face in their notes compared to the 40 watts of the X1 carbon. It takes 1.75 millimeter diameter. It comes equipped with a double sided flexible magnetic plate that you saw previously previously, the textured and the smooth side, double smiley face there also, max build plate temperature of 110 degrees Celsius, max speed of tool head up to 500 millimeters per second, max acceleration of up to 20 meters per second squared, max hot end flow of 32 millimeter cube per second, recommended for PLA, PETG, TPU, ABS, ASA, and PLA carbon fiber, compatible with PETG carbon fiber, ABS carbon fiber, ASA carbon fiber, PET carbon fiber, PA carbon fiber, PET, PC, and PA. There's a chamber monitoring camera, a power loss recovery, a filament runout sensor, and connectivity over USB and Wi-Fi. Slicing software is that Elegoo slicer from before, and the print file format is G-Code. Supportive file formats are STL, OBJ, 3MF, STP, and the storage is an onboard 8 gigabytes of EMMC, which is also a double smiley face from their notes. Overall, I think this is a pretty decent printer. I haven't had a ton of time to print on it. I've only spent a couple weeks with it. They're saying it's gonna be around the $500 US mark. That puts it right between a Bamboo Lab A1 and P1S. So it's a decent option for getting into a Core XY at the $500 mark. We'll see if that's the actual number that they end up going with. I don't see this on their website yet, so they haven't fully released it, but there will be an affiliate link in the description. So feel free to check that out if you wanna support the channel. They also make a lot of really nice SLA resin 3D printers. I have the Mars 3 and it gave me really good results. I'm just not a huge fan of the whole resin workflow. It's a bit messy, a bit stinky. Not a huge fan, but the results are very nice. I hope you liked that one. If you wanna see anything specific printed on this 3D printer, let me know in the comments and I might put it into a short and I'll see you in the next one.